Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ben with Eritabek Gardens in Georgia, Zone 7. I have a nice one for you today, especially if you are new to figs. Today's video is on how to root fig cuttings for beginners. I've seen people giving, I've seen people that have fig trees, giving fig cuttings to people because they want them to have fig trees. They don't have the plant to give, but they have the cuttings. They can cut some of the branches and send it to you or give it to you. But the people they are giving it to have never rooted fig cuttings before. They don't know how to root fig cuttings. Yet you give them fig cuttings to root it by themselves. They may be lucky to root those cuttings and sometimes they lose those cuttings. What is the purpose of giving them fig cuttings if you can show them or teach them how to root the fig cuttings? And if you have been following my channel, when it comes to root, uh, rooting fig cuttings, I do say it. I prefer to root fig cuttings in spring and in summer. If you root fig cuttings in winter, you have to baby it a lot. But in spring and summer, no much babying. So, I'm going to show you guys who want to have fig trees. And you know people that can give you fig cuttings. There are people I want to give fig cuttings to. It's easier to give you fig cuttings than fig plants. I can just cut a branch from my fig tree, cut it into pieces, send you two or three. But if I don't tell you how to root it, you may not succeed in rooting it. You may try. But this video is how to teach you, show you how you can root fig cuttings and root it successfully. Not just rooting fig cuttings, but how to take care of it after you root it, rooting fig cuttings is just the beginning. You have to fertilize it. You have to water it. You have to take good care of it for it to grow, produce figs for you to eat. So, without wasting much time, let me show you how to root fig cuttings for beginners. Okay, when you get your cuttings that you want to root, number one, your cuttings have a top and a bottom. So how do you know the top and the bottom? If you look at this cutting right here, right here, you see it? That is where the last leaf on this stem fell off from or was removed. And then at the top, there's a little bump at the top of where the last leaf came out from. That is where the new growth will spring out from. You can see it looks like a, a white dot. That is where the new growth so that is how you know where will be the top and where will be the bottom. But if not, you might be rooting your cutting upside down. And then when the new leaf start coming out, it will force itself 
to make a U-turn to start growing up this way. Instead of growing, see, instead of growing straight out this way, it will force itself to bend over. So that's why you need to know the top and the bottom. And two, I use candle wax, I melt candle, and then dip this top part into the wax so as to prevent the top from drying. Because you don't want to root your cutting while this top will start drying, then it will affect your cutting. And you can see that this top is closer to the first node. This is a node and roots comes out of nodes. This is where your last leaf, this is where the last leaf on this stem fell off. So the top is where the new growth we shoot out from. So that is the top. But the bottom, I, I didn't put candle wax. The reason is because this is the bottom that would be in the water. And if you look at, there is a node. So roots should be coming out from this node, this node, and the roots will be coming out from the body. And if you look at, you see something like, that looks like white spot or brown spot. I don't know if you can see it. So those spots are where roots will come out from a part from the node, yeah, the roots will be coming out all over. And then two, three, you want to write the name of the fig variety. Uh, let me use this one, this one might be better. Now, if you look at the name is Black Zeda, Black Zeda. That is the name of the variety. So you want to write the name on your cordings so that you remember what variety you are rooting, especially if you are rooting more than one variety. So you need to write the name on the cording. And then the next thing you want to do is to get a container that has water and then you dip the cuttings, you put the cuttings into the water. Can you see that? You put the cutting in the water and then you leave it for it to start forming roots in this water. So let me show you the ones, the cuttings that I've started rooting already. Okay, here are the cordings that I'm rooting in water. This is the one I just started with, that you saw. And also, you see, Black Zeda. Now you can see that I put a, a mark here with marker. That is the level of the water in this container. And that is the level I want to retain. So when the level of this water goes down and then I top it up back to this level because that's where I want the root to start from downwards. So these are other ones that I'm rooting already. Look at these ones. You see, they've started bringing out new growth. You see, above where the last leaf fell off from. So you can see. Now, you can see some roots in the water. Now, let me bring this one out for you to see. Look at the roots. You see, you see the, you see the mark here? So, this is where the level water is always at. So if it goes down, I top it. Now, the only time I change this water in this container, it is 
when the water becomes milky, it's getting, it's not getting cleared anymore. The water is not clear. Then I remove the cuttings, change the water, put a new water in the container, and then put the cuttings back. Now, if the water is clear, I don't change it. There is a reason. Let me show you this. Look at this. You see? Can you see some roots floating on the water? Every time you move the cuttings or you bring it out, you will lose some roots. Until the roots are very long, then you won't lose any roots anymore. But as long as the roots are short, when they start coming out, yes, you will lose some roots when you bring it out or when you change the water. But that is okay because more roots will still come out of the cuttings and keep growing. And you leave it and you allow, you see, can you see, look at that. That root is growing longer there. So I don't want to bring it out, but okay, let me turn it this way. Can you see some of them growing long? Look at that one. Woo! I didn't even see it before. Can you see how long those roots are? <laughs> this is nice. Look at those roots. You see? Wow. You see? But right now, I cannot remove them from this water. The reason is because, you see, new growth from, from that node above where the last leaf fell out from. That is the new growth. But I'm still looking at this growth. It might be a fruit instead of leaf because it has two spots above the leaf. One is for fruit and one is for leaf. So I will wait and see. If this is fruit, I will just take it off and then allow the leaf to grow on the other spot right there. So also this one too, you can see there is a new growth there. So I'm going to wait to see if it's going to be leaf or fig. If it's a new fruit, I will, I will remove it because that will affect the growing of the cuttings because the cutting will want to put all of its attention on the fruit instead of growing leaves. So you can see. So right now, I will leave it and allow it to grow. You see, new growth right there. You can see there's another growth there. So you can see the same thing here. I write names of all these varieties. And then some grow roots faster than, than some. And some will grow the top you see, the top growth grows faster than the roots. But you just take your time. Don't be in a rush. You see, don't be in a rush. Look at that one there. So you don't want to be in a rush. You wait for the roots to grow long, just like these ones here now. If the if they have leaves growing on these cuttings and they have these long roots like this, I will take them out and then put them in the soil. But we will wait and let them grow more longer roots before we will transfer it into the soil. So this is one simple method to root fig cuttings by beginners, you know? 
So, this is it. I'm glad that you can see it. It doesn't need any baby. No, just all you do is just check the level of the water. And then if it goes down, you just add more. Except if the water is not clean, it's not clear anymore, it's milky. Then you take the cuttings out, pour away that water, wash the container, because if not, it leaves some slimy residue inside the cup. So wash the cup and pour it away and then put new water and then put back the cuttings into the container so you can see how i am rooting my cuttings i just changed this water it might look milky it's because of the container i just changed this water not a few days ago so you can see that some have roots some don't but you just be patient for it so we'll give it few days and then we'll come back and check the progress. One week ago, I put this cutting into this cup, into this water. And look at one week that started producing new growth, new growth, new growth. One week ago. You see black zeta and look at the root that it has started producing black zeta just one week in the water now let me tell you this it depends on the variety some varieties produce roots faster than some. Look at this one here. It's been in the water before Black Zedda, but look at how slow the roots, how slow the growth of the roots are. And look at that one, same time. I put this same time in the water, but look, at the growth of their roots even that one there but look at the top it has started producing leaves new growth all of them even this one here look at that and this one look at that new growth there there's a new bump there look at this one look at the growth at the top but look at the root. The roots are not growing fast. Not growing fast. But look at this one. Look at the growth in one week. In one week, look at the growth on these cuttings. And look at how long the roots are. Now, some varieties don't produce long roots in the water like this look at the growth if it continues like this if that new growth continue to grow and these roots are not long i will have to put it in the soil and then it will continue the growth of the roots in the soil let me show you what i'm talking about Remember these ones here? There were four in here. I put two there. Look at them. And look at it. Now look at the roots. They are not long. But look at the growth on these cuttings. Now, the color of the leaves are light green instead of dark green. And the reason is because there is no much light in here and there is no much heat. So, because of that, I will have to put it in the soil so that and then put it in the garden shade where there will be sunlight for one or two hours and then that will help the color to become darker 
but the roots are not long. So I will have to put it in the soil that way. I've done it before and it works. And then it will start and then the roots will start growing longer in the soil. Now look at this on here. Oh, there is a growth down there. Now look at this. Now look at this one here. Something is happening here. Now let me show you. There are two bumps there. One is for leaves and the other one is for fruit. The one to the right is leaves. The bump to the left, you see, the bump to the left here is fruit. This bump to the right is leaf. Just like, you remember a week ago that I said, well, I will leave that bump to see if it's going to be fruit or leaf. But it turned out to be leaf, just like this one here. So this is leaf and the other one is fruit. But what I will do is, I will give it some days for this leaf to open up and start growing and then I will remove the new fig that is forming. And why am I going to remove the new fig? It's because all of the nutrient will be going mostly to the fruit because the cutting will want the fruit we will will concentrate on the fruit instead of on the growth and the root. And look at, the roots are not long yet. So I will leave it for some days. See, you can see that this, see, this is a leaf. You can see it's about to open there. It's about to open. So the other one here is is the fruit okay let me do it let me even break it now you see that's it it fell into the cup you see there so now this cutting will concentrate on the leaf, see, it's about to open. It's about to open there. You see that? So now the cutting will concentrate on growing longer roots and also the leaves growing. So today I'm going to up out, I'm going to up uh, put these cuttings in the soil. I'm not going to bring it out. But you can see how long the roots are. Just as I said, some roots will be very long and some roots will not be very long. By the time it will be due to put it in the soil. So this one also I'm going to upward this, put it in the soil. Now look at the roots of both of them. But look at the growth on them. So I have to put this, these cuttings in the soil so that the leaves can be darker when they start receiving more heat, more sun. So let's go to my garden shade and I will put them in the soil. Well, I'm in my garden shade now. Now, this is the soil that I'm going to uh, put the cuttings into. This is the soil I'm going to put it with. Now, you can see some white stuff in the soil. That is pearlite. Let me show it to you. This is pearlite. Vigoro cell pearlite. Miracle Grow Cell Pearlite. Look at what it does. Helps to prevent soil
compaction so that your soil don't become solid like uh, mud. Promote strong root development. Use with potting mixes or garden soils. Improves drainage and aeration. So, see, this is it. So it helps it. So, and that's what you are seeing in here. So that the, so when I give it water, the water will be able to flow out easily. It will not retain so much water. But the water will be moist, you know, but your soil will not be compacted. So, also this is the one gallon container I'm going to use to root, uh, to, to continue with the rooting of the cuttings. Now, I've put the name of this variety. It's called Partridge Eye. And the reason why it's called Partridge Eye is when, when the tree produces fig, the bottom part of the fig, there's something that we call the eye at the bottom. Sometimes those eyes are tight. Sometimes the eyes are open up. And when they're open, it's easy for insects, ants, to go into the fig. But with this variety, at the eye, it is red, while the rest body is green. And from afar, you can see the red. And that's how you know that, yes, indeed, that variety is Partridge Eye. By the time this cutting roots and grows and produce fig, if the eye is not red, then I know that the seller sold me a different variety of cutting, calling it Partridge Eye. So that's, sometimes you use the name to know if the seller sold a wrong cuttings just because of the money. Because knowing that that variety, people want that variety and then they give it that fake name in order to get more money from people. But most of the time you don't know until the fig tree produce figs. And then that's when you know when it now ripes. That's when you know that the seller sold you the right variety or not. So, I'm going to put in some soil in here first to some level before, you see. Now, I'm going to take, now look at that. You can see the name, Partridge Eye. I see it, Partridge Eye. Now look at the roots. This is beautiful. So now I'm going to see, because, okay, this is good. The level of the soil that I put down is good because I don't want the soil to get to the uh, tip of the container. I just want it to stop somewhere there. So I'm going to put soil. I'm going to use my hand so that I put it gently so that it does not break the roots. You have to be careful. Because now those roots are delicate. You see, I'm putting it gently so that, you see, it's covering the root easily, not breaking those roots. Good, you see, now I can move the soil around you see <laughs> so 
so so you have to be careful so that the roots don't break so i'm going to pad the soil down a little bit to make it a little bit hard to keep the cutting from moving so the next thing is i'm going to water it that's it partridge eye so i'm going to complete the rest and then i will show you guys okay so i've uh, uppered the four cuttings and this is partridge eye Partridge eye. This one is Ron de Bordeaux. It's a French fig variety. And some people call it RDB, Ron de Bordeaux. So these are the four. And then now I'm going to water it. I brought it outside my garden shed because of the water. and then i will leave it here for some time for the water to drain out before i will take them back into the garden shade So I want so I want the the water to saturate the soil very well. Let's see. So the next thing I'm going to do is to show you guys how to fertilize your, your rooted cuttings. So that will be the next thing I'm going to show you guys. Okay, I've brought them inside. Because you see that there's still a little bit of water coming out. That's okay. Now, these two went through the same process. What do I mean? A week and some days I'll put it these ones. Look at how dark the the leaves are now. But before they were like this also. When I brought them from inside and upward them and look at the colors. It's darker now. Why? Because you can see sun there. The sun starts from somewhere around there. And they receive sun there for two hours for the day. Two hours. Now look at the ones that have, these ones are more than one month here. See, growing. Look at that one there. I think one or two of the leaves fell off. Just like this one. One leaf fell off and that one's about to fall off. But don't worry, they will grow as long as you keep giving them water. Sometimes fig can be funny. But these three, one, two, three, need to be fertilized with soluble fertilizer, not slow release, because their roots are still tender. Now, why do I need to fertilize them? Now, this cutting here, all these cuttings that you are seeing, when they cut them from the tree as branches, they had little nutrients in them when they were cut. Why? Because the mother tree was dormant. And then they cut the branches and they cut them into pieces as cuttings. 
Now, when in fall and winter, all the nutrients in the mother tree went down to the root and store it there. And then in spring, all the nutrients stored in the roots will come back up from the root, will come back up into the branches so it can grow again. That's why fig is called a deciduous tree. Fig trees are deciduous trees. It means in in fall and winter, they will lose all the leaves will fall off. And then in spring, new leaves will spring up because the stored nutrient in the root will, will come back up. So when these cuttings were cut, they were all dormant. No leaves, no growth anymore. So the few nutrients in the branches that didn't go to the bottom were stored in the branches. And now the branches are cut into pieces. So the little nutrients in these cuttings is what is helping these cuttings to grow. It is the nutrients in those cuttings. But after a while, the nutrients in these cuttings will, all, will not be able to take care of these cuttings. So because of that, you have to start feeding them now. Remember, they are in container. If you put this cutting in the ground, then you won't need to bother yourself much. All you need is just keep giving them water and then they will get nutrients from the soil. But they are in containers here. So you, it is a responsibility to give them fertilizer to keep growing. And then when they grow to certain height, then you upper them onto a bigger container so that the roots can keep growing. Because if not, they will become root bound. The roots will not, con will not be able to grow more and it might affect the growth of the tree. So now I need to give this tree soluble fertilizer before they stop growing or all of the leaves fall and then they dry up and die for not feeding them because they can't feed themselves. But if they are in the ground, they will feed themselves. So now I'm going to show you the soluble fertilizer that I'm going to use to feed them. Okay, I have my soluble fertilizer here and I have my water can here. I have one gallon water in this water can. Though this is two gallon, they have one gallon of water in here. Now, let me show you the soluble fertilizer, plant food. Now, if you look at here, you see that number 24816. There are three very important nutrients that your plants need. They need more than three, but these are the major players in taking care of your plant. You have nitrogen, you have phosphorus, and you have potassium. Nitrogen is 24, the N. If you hear NPK, the N is for nitrogen, 24. P is for phosph phosphorus, that is the eight, and potassium is the 16. The nitrogen will help your plants to grow better and faster. The phosphorus will help it, but not much because the phosphorus is for flowering and for fruiting. Then the potassium is for the root and the health of the plant. So because they are still young, you need more of nitrogen, which is 24. And this is it. Now, the feeding of this soluble fertilizer is one tablespoon to one gallon of water. One tablespoon to one gallon of water. But because they are rooted cuttings and they are still young, I'm not going to give them 
one tablespoon. I'm going to give them one teaspoon. In fact, some people will give them quarter teaspoon to one gallon because they are still young. You don't want to load them with uh, with too much or, or or too strong fertilizer. So, this is one teaspoon. This is one tablespoon. One tablespoon to one gallon of water for mature plant. But for newly rooted corn, you can use one teaspoon or half teaspoon. You can see the mark right there. That mark is for half teaspoon. So I'm going to give it, I don't want to give it, okay. I want it to be in between. Okay. So that is quarter tablespoon or half teaspoon. And then you put it in the water. Now, some people will only do use just soluble fertilizer. And some people will add what we call mycorrhiza mycorrhiza helps the roots it comprises of different fungi they're all mixed together you see concentrated mix water soluble powder sustainable for all growers vegetables fruits flowers field crops trees shrubs see Mycorrhiza in inoculant, plant growth promoter. Those are all the ingredients in there. It says, this is the name of this brand, Mycotru. There are different brands. So Mycotru contains a diverse selection of endomycorrhiza. Those are fungi and plant growth promoters. This is a highly effective and easy to use product that will vigorously promote your plant establishment and growth including more blossoms fruits and top growth increase overall root biomass biomass reduce transplant shock optimize nutrients and water uptake reduce water and fertilizer usage improve tolerance to environmental stress now, for soil drench, you use, for one gallon, you use half tablespoon. So half tablespoon will be one teaspoon. So I'm going to, now you can see the powder right there. So I'm going to take one teaspoon, one teaspoon, pour it in there, and then what I would do is to mix it together. So let me finish mixing it because I can do both at the same time. So I will show it to you. I've uh, finished shaking the water can and I brought them out here so that I can give it to them out here. I don't want the inside of my garden sheet to be too wet. So now I'm giving it to them. So the macroizer what it will do is that the mycorrhiza will go, when it gets to the root, the fungi, 
in that terwara will attach itself to the roots in the soil and then help the roots to, to, to produce more roots. That is what the uh, macroriza is doing, is going to do. It's going, the, uh, the fungi, or all the fungi or the fungus in that fertilizer will attach themselves to the roots in the soil and help, if they attach themselves to one root, that one root will start producing more roots. So all the roots they will attach themselves to will produce more roots. So that will help it to grow faster, to grow well, so that it will have, because if your plants have good roots, your plants will do well. Your plants will grow and your plants will produce fruit. Now, let me show you. Now, after this, after a while, they will keep growing. And then what you want to do, you want to upper them to either three gallon container or five gallon containers. Because as the roots are growing, you don't want the roots to get stuck in this container. They won't be able to grow out. So they will just be going around. So they will become root bound. But before they become root bound, and you see them growing, what you want to do is, you want to upper them to bigger containers, like these ones, you see? Bigger container, look at it, it's growing. Look at them, in bigger containers. Now that one lost some of its leaves, but it's still alive, but you can see, they're all in bigger containers. So that's how they keep growing. Look at these ones there. You see them? You see? Now that one is in five gallon container. These ones are in three gallons, but very soon they will be upported to five gallons. So you see different stages of their growth. And by the time they get to this stage, very soon they will produce figlets. So that's how you do it. You go from stage to stage. And then you see, they keep growing to produce figs. So thank you for watching this video. I'm glad that you, that you can watch this video to help you to know how to root fig cuttings and to know how to care for it. Because if you don't give it soluble fertilizer, they will get to a stage, they will stop growing, and they will die, and you will lose all of your cuttings. It happened to me. The first time I rooted cuttings, I rooted so many cuttings, I didn't know that I have to give them fertilizer. I lost maybe 90 or 95% of those cuttings that I rooted, and that was a waste of money. So if you know how to root cuttings, it will save you a lot of money. If you want to buy like this tree now in the store or online, it will cost you more money than to buy cutting like that, to buy cuttings. Cuttings will be cheaper than the plant because whoever is selling the plant has put in a lot of work. You can see that. It has put in a lot of work into it to get to this stage. So you pay Maybe three times or four times more plus shipping. If you if the variety you are buying you can't find it in the store except online, that will cost you more. But if you know how to root thick cuttings, then you'll be able to root different varieties just like that. Most of these fig trees you are seeing here. I rooted them myself. Most of them. Few of them are bought few of them. I rooted this one last year. Look at it. Asiano, last year. And look at what is going on. You see? I rooted this one last year and, and look at fruit on it. So, 
with this you'll be able to grow as many varieties that you want this is how to root feet cuttings by beginners thank you for watching if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that every time I upload new videos you will be notified and I will see you guys again in my next video God bless you real good bye